Okay, we're going to just move it quickly on. We have two more inputs now. We have Francis Ward and Pat Aiton who are going to talk about the assessment practice in the City of Dublin VC. So we'd ask Pat and Francis to take the floor. Need no introduction, I'm sure. But I could tell you funny stories if you'd like. <laughs> okay. Hello. And I really would prefer if you kept the funny stories until maybe after the lunch, not even the tea before the question and answer session. Ten minutes. So we've ten, ten minutes yeah. to try and keep okay. that time. Okay, yeah, frame. perfect, perfect. Thank you very much. Well, this morning is an opportunity for both Francis and I to share on behalf of the City Dublin VC and the other, other adult literacy organisers, many of whom are here, to share our practice and what we've developed or what has been developed across the city in relation to assessment, both initial and ongoing. Puts now, we have Francis Ward and Pat Aiton who are going to talk about the assessment practice in the City Dublin VC. So we'd ask Pat and Francis to take the floor. Need no introduction, I'm sure. But I could tell you funny stories if you'd like. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, this morning is an opportunity for both Francis and I to share on behalf of the City Dublin VC and the other, other adult literacy organisers, many of whom are here, to share our practice and what we've developed or what has been developed across the city in relation to assessment, both initial and ongoing. Now, I take on board completely what Karen is saying or has said about accountability, and we probably will be very aware of that. We would also have been very much in the mind of looking at assessment in relation to teaching and learning, and how it will get or bring the student to where that student or that person would like to go. So I'd like to introduce you to the CDVC Adult Tracking or Tracking Program Progress Framework. It's an assessment tool to support teaching and learning and to track adult learners' progress in literacy. So the aims of the process, and first of all it's important to say it is a process. It's the way of working and that's what we're trying to promote. Okay? So to promote literacy assessment as an integral part of teaching and learning. So it's part of what we do, it's not an add-on. It's not I'll do it today, I might do it next week. It's what we do, it's part of the process. Acknowledge the qualitative and the quantitative dimensions of learning. And often I think we would agree that the qualitative aspect of, of assessment is often left behind or put on the sideline or maybe not perceived to be as important. To promote a common procedure and set of tools for both initial and ongoing assessment. In Dublin we would have 10, 12 literacy services across the city as well as many centres. So we're trying to get to promote a, a way of working, a system of working. So we're doing the same thing and we're talking about the same thing and we have the same meaning and interpretation when we use various words, phrases or terminology. To ensure that students are partners in the process and assessment is based on the tasks and the students are currently working on. Now that is very much in line with promoting active participation of adults in their learning process. It's also in line for those of us who are around from the very first version of guidelines for good adult literacy work, so that adults become actively involved in their own learning rather than passive in the process. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. It's a technology I knew would get me. I was practicing the other bit. So the assessment method, we're taking it at two, as we say, over two slides. It's based, it's task-based, and evidence created from this is used to highlight achievements, to show in a real way that's what the person can do. To also focus in a way that's non-judgmental on the areas that need improvement. To set new goals and to feed into lesson planning or how we plan to get to where the student wants to go. As they say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you. So assessment method. The initial assessment is carried out over a few sessions. The results from the first meeting or meetings, the results from the meetings are recorded and expanded on as the tutor and student get to know each other better. So ongoing assessment is applied to naturally occurring activities twice or three times a year or at particular points for that student. 
But what we're trying to do is keep what we're doing in line with where the student wants to go and to be constantly checking back that what's do happening is working for that person and if not, how we can adjust it. Assessment is a combination of methods, as Kieran has already mentioned and has been mentioned earlier and mentioned in our uh, deliberations yesterday. So initial and ongoing assessment is a multi-layered process. It's self-assessment of the student, of his or her own skills, needs. It's observation by the adult literacy organiser or the tutor of the student's performance in tasks that are that the student wants to improve on. And then it is an analysis by the literacy organiser or the tutor of the tasks carried out by the student. Now in order to do this, we have to be, it has to be recorded because it would be impossible to have an accurate, um, to, to move along with any accuracy and for the person to know where they're going, where they've come from and where they are in that process. So the initial interview or summary form, and the initial interview in the City of Dublin, as with the other literacy services, may be carried out by the other literacy organiser. It may be carried out by a designated person, by a support tutor in the case of in the city, or by a programme coordinator. So the student is introduced to the service and the information to, first of all, to ensure that they're in the right place, that this is the service they should be with. The information gathered at that time helps to determine the student's learning needs. It also looks at their previous experience of learning, both informal and formal, their present skills, their future goals, and learning options. Excuse me. I'm getting next to you. Bear with me now. I don't want to win on Frances' part. She might have to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be good. Wouldn't be good. So the we would have we've developed several a range of forms, three, four forms, to help us to do this, and they're common across the, the city. So the initial assessment record sheet, which is a very wordy, but it's it's the information or it's it's what we use at the, the, the first meeting. It's to help the tutor and student plan a program of work. So the student works on a reading task at an estimated level, and that estimate, that's based on the information that has been gleaned from, the, 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 from speaking to the student. And that's related to the student's interests and learning goals. Now, if a student tells you they're a fluent reader, they're there to work on their writing, you don't produce a reading task. So in relation to a writing task, it's related to the student's personal details and experience. So all the tasks are related and of value and of interest and relevant to the student. So now I'll hand you over to Francis. Okay. Okay, so to continue on then, um, and we then uh, try to, we have a tracking form uh, in which we track, you know, the first of all, the baseline of where the student is at, okay? And as you can see, in um, keeping with our, our notion that, uh, you know, we're working in partnership with the student, you know, this tracking form is also carried out with the student, okay? And it, it's worked on the tutor and student working together, tracking where, where the student's at, and with the support of a support tutor. So initially, we're, we're trying to get a baseline of where the student's at there. Okay. This would happen uh, probably about three weeks into, um, you know, the student having started to have, uh, working with the tutor. So at this stage, the tutor and student, initially the student often is, is, is very nervous. Often they, um, they give, they give uh, the, the impression they give can, of, of where they're at can, can actually not be very accurate, okay? So it takes a while, over three weeks, you know, with the, with the student, settle, uh, student settling, settling down to work out, uh, you know, a, a kind of a definite baseline, as it were. 
Okay, we then use that tracking form through the year, maybe uh, twice or three times, uh, to, to work out you know, the students' progress in the task that they're working on. Or very often, it's used when progress is noted, that we don't actually have to wait, you know, we're going to do it on that particular date, and then, then, or whatever. But as the tutor and student are working along, and uh, it's noted that progress has been made, we then can uh, reintroduce the tracking form and, and note that. So uh, we use this tracking form then to chart the learning in three ways. We, we work out the learning skill of a particular task and we track that. We track the level that the learner is working at and we track various dimensions of learning. Now I'm going to cover those just now with, with further... Uh, okay. So when we talk about the skills then, I'm not going to read them out to you, well capable of reading there, we, we, we track nine skills, or nine skills can be tracked. And again, it depends entirely on what the, the task that this, this student is working on, which of these skills you track. There are five skills in reading and, and four skills in writing. And you, you, you uh, student and tutor, um, consider the, the task that they're, they're working on and, and, and determine which of these skills they're working on and uh, in, in that task and, and track that. Okay, so we track progress then through five levels of difficulty or across sample activities at the same level, okay? So, each of the nine skills can be tracked through five levels of skill. Okay, entry level and levels one, two, three, and four. These levels emerge from our own practice. Okay, but levels one, two, three, and four are also very much equivalent to the National Qualification Framework levels. So, for example, if you were working on, if your task fell into the skill uh, right to convey information for different, for different purposes, okay? At, at a level, uh, this could mean, you know, at, at, a, at a level one or two, um, it could mean writing one's own name and address. Whereas at a higher level, it could mean that you were, uh, you were um, referring to uh, a work-related report, okay? So that's where the, the, the task fits into a, a level of skill. Okay. okay, then at each level, at, at each level, progress can be tracked uh, through a range of components within a skill. So at each of those levels, nine, nine levels of skill that we, we, we have there, we also basically, it's not about uh, us naming all of, this, all of the components that could be um, could be covered under that skill, okay? Obviously, there are many components, but we introduce uh, samples of components at each level. So, for example, at a level two, uh, the skill read words and text, the components could be something like uh, read to do notes on a calendar or, or diary, read lists of, of items related to personal interest or hobby, uh, give a, one of the main points from a simple paragraph, or it could be any other sample that fits into that level. And then we track you know, how, how the student is doing on that particular component of, of a skill. Okay? Pardon? Okay, we're grand. Okay, so people were talking about, you know, can you track confidence? Can you track all sorts of different dimensions? Okay, we have tried to do that, okay? Because we have considered that learning for adults is not just about knowledge. It's not just about the what. It's also about how they can use their skills to make a difference in their daily lives. And that's very much what adults are coming into literacy services for to improve their skills so they can get on better in their daily lives. So we then endeavor to track progress in literacy, to take account of the setting, okay? And the setting, what that means is that, um, you know, adults 
have to use their skills out in the bank, in the post office, or whatever. So that's where we, we so we, we, we track their, the progress on, the, on, on their setting, okay, and how they can use the skill out, out in the real world, okay. We, uh, a lot of talk today about confidence we use. This, the, uh, can students use the skill now with, with a great degree of, co degree of confidence from the time they came in? And very often, you know, that's what students need to know, that their confidence has grown, that now they can do the task more confidently. Can they do it more fluently? And, and can they do it independently? That they're not, they don't need somebody beside them helping them to do it, that now they can go and they can do it more, more independently. And we, we track these in, in, in also in stages like beginner, getting there, all, you know, has achieved at the end, okay? And we also uh, talk to students about the learning process and how they are in the learning process, you know, how they have developed their notion of their own autonomy, how, how much they have to put in to the learning process. So we try to track that as well. Okay, so then to almost conclude, uh, and I think we probably kept it within time, um, the City of Dublin DC <coughs> Tracking Progress Framework hopes to be focused, focused on supporting uh, teaching and learning. Okay, it's uh, systematic. The progress tracked and monitored is using a common procedure and a common tool for both initial and ongoing assessment. It's evidence-based. It provides evidence of progress or lack of progress and informs further teaching and, and learning. It's not a curriculum, it's a scaffold for learning. Okay, so, uh, I, we have uh, examples of our tracking form with us if you want to have a look at it. And uh, I want to thank you very much for uh, listening to us. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.